Howdy y'all, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are safe and I hope you guys are healthy. My name is Josh and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you guys so much for being subscribed to me. I really appreciate it and it means the world to me. And if you are brand new, I hope you enjoy what you watch and consider subscribing. So today's video, I wanna go over probably one of the most popular footwear brands as of late and it has been a very popular footwear brand for centuries. And today I wanted to talk about Birkenstock, a little bit of a history about Birkenstock as well well as maybe why, ex, trying to explain why it's as popular as it is today. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Right off the bat, I wanted to do a little bit of a Cliff Notes version of the history of Birkenstock. I don't know everything about Birkenstock, but this is just what I gathered from the numerous uh, things that I found online and personal research. So Birkenstock was actually started all the way in 1774 by a shoemaker named Johann Adam Birkenstock. And for quite a while, it was actually a family trade and so the Birkenstock name and family continued the company. Over centuries and centuries of creating footwear, the Birkenstock brand has been able to actually start creating and continue to create shoes that are really, really comfortable and conform to the wearer's foot so that comfortability is such a big, big focus of their brand. And you can definitely see that at one point in time, they started making insoles to insert into shoes, which would make any shoe more comfortable. And they still do sell insoles and cork insoles are really the thing that put them on the map. Cork insoles, of course, they're not 100% cork. There are other materials that go into Birkenstock um, footbeds, but cork insoles are really what they're known for. So primarily Birkenstocks were very, very popular in Europe, however, did not come over to the United States until about 1966. And just as multiple different shoe or footwear companies, Birkenstock was able to actually become synonymous with a subculture that was extremely popular at the time in the 60s to 70s, which was hippie culture. And just that conformity to the foot, that comfortability, that closer to nature type of feel that the hippies absolutely loved as a concept, Birkenstock just kind of fit into that, um, that mentality. And speaking of the 70s and the popularity of Birkenstock within hippie culture, uh, the one of their most popular and most famous models, the Birkenstock Arizona, did not come out until about 1973. So pulling it a little bit away from the history side of things, Birkenstock has been able to make itself such a solidified name and recognizable shoemaker throughout all of the centuries in it, of his existence and honestly, I think that Birkenstocks are absolutely amazing and an essential that almost everyone should probably have in their wardrobe. Not because of like the style aspect, but also because how good that cork insole is for your foot. So what I mean by that is that the cork insole usually starts off pretty stiff. Um, I would never say that uh, a Birkenstock feels too, too good right out of the box. They feel a lot like every other shoe, just kind of really stiff, that insole does take quite a bit of breaking in however when you put the work in and you break it in sometimes it would like cause like blisters around my like toes and stuff like that unfortunately however with a lot of uh, you know tender love and care uh, Birkenstock soles can kind of compress and really shape itself to the mold of your actual foot so that it becomes kind of like that insole is specific to the wear uh, that you put on your shoe, which I think is actually one of the best concepts and that makes for one of the most comfortable um, experiences for a shoe. Practicality wise, Birkenstocks are absolutely amazing and I really highly suggest them if you haven't before. Um, of course, the most popular, at least as of right now, um, Birkenstock Bostons have been making waves in the uh, men's fashion or street fashion scene. And I primarily think that is due to the popularity of loungewear and more relaxed looking clothing in general. I think it's a great look. I think Birkenstocks are absolutely amazing. And I do have a pair of Bostons back in my parents' house that I don't currently have with me, but I have a couple of 
Birkenstocks that I wanted to show you guys here on the channel. So to show you guys a little bit of my little uh, Birkenstock collection here, um, What's great about Birkenstock is they offer a very, very wide range of variations on the models of their shoes that really cater to, you know, the really premium high-end quality things, to the workers, to just people just wanting a really cheap sandal, and the first of which is going to be this pair right here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what kind of rubber or foam that they use in this pair, but obviously this is like 100% that material. Uh, it is also very comfortable does not have the cork footbed but I mean I got these for about $30 at Urban Outfitters they were having a sale and I was and my brother let me know I went in and I was able to find a pair that fit me thankfully enough so yeah Birkenstock like rubber or foam sandals I believe these are these still would be considered the Arizona silhouette but on to the next one. There's a couple that I'm really excited to show you guys. Probably my personal favorite Birkenstock um, model is going to actually be called the Birkenstock Kyoto. And this is the Kyoto right here. It is still kind of that open toe sandal uh, silhouette, but it doesn't have the two straps on the front. It has these overlapping straps, one in suede and one in a leather, and it is such a beautiful shoe. This one you can really tell the cork and sole is very well molded into my foot. I've been wearing these for quite a while. Not necessarily something that I wear in, when I want to like show off an outfit. This is kind of like a daily use run to the grocery store. Super easy to slip on. Super nice. There is like a closed toe version of this that I don't remember the name of them. But there are so many different uh, models in uh, Birkenstock's repertoire that I would really, really highly suggest looking for one that really kind of speaks to you. I love the Birkenstock Kyoto so much that I actually got another pair. This is like an all black pair. I have not yet worn these. Um, these are just on ice until I kind of wreck the other pair. But this one I think is more of like a nicer pair just because it's all blacked out. The next pair of Birkenstocks that I wanted to show you guys are actually one meant for workers. So this right here is the Birkenstock A630. These shoes are really cool, like full rubber, um, so pretty much completely waterproof. Uh, they kind of sit loosely, they're very low cut on the ankle, so it sometimes tends to kind of slide off my ankle a little bit, but that's okay because I don't need these shoes to actually really uh, stay on my foot super securely. They're super, super comfortable despite them being like all rubber. They do have that insole. Let me actually take that out and show you guys real quick. So this is the insole. You can really see the cork come through here and that like wear pattern still comes through on the top here, but this is on the inside of the A630, super, super nice. You can actually buy these separately, I believe. And so like you can use Birkenstock insoles on your other shoes, which makes them more comfortable. But yeah, the Birkenstock A630, I think they actually look really cool. Uh, they can be kind of goofy. Let me show you like the toe box of it. But the toe box is really, really wide and kind of square. So it can kind of look awkward in some fits. But if you're wearing super loose pants, I think these look absolutely amazing. And this last pair that I wanted to show you guys is one that I, probably like my favorite Birkenstock in my collection right now, and it is this pair right here. So this, I actually customized myself. They started off as, you can see it from the inside, it was a green wool pair that I was able to get from uh, one of my older cousins who lives out in Philly. Shout out Francis, thank you very much. And so they started with this like green wool pair, and then I used a mixture of glue and stitching myself by hand and put all these patches on and they've been fraying and getting all messed up and yeah they actually have become one of my favorite favorite shoes because the more they get raggedy the better they look in my opinion but yeah that's about all of my collection that i have here at my house right now and honestly i very very highly suggest getting yourself a pair of birkenstocks no matter what model speaks to you best 
And I mean, like there are a lot of selection of what you can choose. You can choose the general releases, which is generally what I have. I don't have any collaboration um, Birkenstocks, but there have been so, so many collaborations. I've compiled a small list of, a, of some of the collaborators that they have worked with. This isn't all of them, but this is some of like the high-end fashion ones that I feel like some of you guys might be interested in. There's the Dior uh, Birkenstock collaboration, the Jill Sander collaboration, Valentino. I'm not a big Valentino guy, but if you like it, that's cool. Um, Celine has done theirs. Rick Owens, and I'm a really big fan of the Rick Owens um, Birkenstock collaborations. They're just a little too far out of my price point that I'm willing to pay for a Birkenstock right now. Uh, Stussy has just recently done their their take on a Boston. I think it looks great. And then they've even done collaborations with the uh, Fashion Institute of uh, Central St. Martin. So yeah, there's so many people to co-sign on how iconic Birkenstocks are that honestly I would not be surprised if just about anyone could find one that speaks to them. As far as price point goes, uh, you'll be paying anywhere, I think it's for like $50 for like the rubber ones or something like that. Full retail I think is about $50, I'm not 100% sure on that, but you can get them on sale. Like I said earlier, I got mine for 30 something dollars. Uh, so they'll run you from anywhere from like 50-ish dollars and then like the more premium pairs and the collaboration pairs well, more premium pairs will go for probably around 200 to 250 and then collaboration pairs uh, will be in the hundreds. Like I think the Rick Owens pair was like four, five hundred, something like that. So there is something for everyone as far as price range goes. And if you want to know how they fit, um, I can't speak for every single Birkenstock model. However, I usually go, I'm a true to size nine. I usually go from a 41 to a 42. A lot of times it is to your benefit to try them on in store, but 41 to 42 fits me perfectly. All right, that's about all I had to say about the Birkenstock brand in general. I do wanna know what you guys think of Birkenstock. Do you think it's just hype for now and will go away later? Or do you think it's here to stay and gonna become a mainstay in a lot of people's wardrobes? Thank you guys so very, very much for watching this video. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below or in my DMs. I'd appreciate if you guys subscribed or follow me on social media. Thank you guys so very much and I appreciate your time. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.